Dan with S3 Archer here and I wanted to do a quick kind of review or introduction to one of the quivers that you saw in a previous video when I was talking about um, my gear for this year 2015. Um, this is a quiver that I picked up. Um, it's a Bobby Ratcliffe um, High Noon Leatherworks. It's the um, the light version and so he had a couple of different ones. He's kind of transitioning out of the business right now but if you are interested in a quiver of this style it's available on eBay. There's someone who bought um, his pattern and is still making it. And so if you, I believe, search for High Noon Hunter, you'll be able to find these quivers. Um, but I really just love the idea of it. It's basically, you know, your, your capture down here, and then you've got this retaining ring up here, and all this is open. It's got a nice hardwood spine in this case. He uh, made it for me with Osage Orange. And so just a quality piece of workmanship conceptually my favorite type of quiver because it's super light it um, in this case has a nice um, woven wool strap fits perfectly um, the arrows will rattle around though it's not going to be super quiet for you if you like something um, that doesn't make any noise definitely a bow mount style or something that has clips form is going to be a lot quieter um, but what drew me to this over a back quiver is I like the idea of being able to visualize what arrow I'm pulling out um, and in my mind it seems just like it would be the ideal setup to have different types of tips based on what you're going to do when you're out in the woods. And so in here, when you wear it, you're able to visualize your shaft, you're able to visualize your tip without actually removing it, where with a back quiver, you got to pull it out and see what you've got. And if you're running a side quiver, where, or um, a hip quiver, which I normally do, you can't use judos in it because it's basically a piece of leather that you're shoving arrows between. And so this one right here is the one I jumped on, and I made a couple of minor modifications to it. This woolen strap, you're able to adjust based on how long you want it. I didn't need to adjust it after I got it. And so I just took some bowstring and sewed the two straps together so that it has a wider surface on my shoulder so it doesn't slide around as much. Um, you can't adjust it after you've done that, but at the same time, I don't need it adjusted. If I ever wanted to, I could just cut that little piece and then using the knots, move it up or down as I please. And I also, we'll get on the bottom here, threw just a small piece of paracord on here and what I use this for is when I first wore it, when I bend over, my quiver would fall forward. And so I use this and I actually tuck it through my belt loop. And that way as I move, the bottom stays pretty secure. Um, and so, like I said, this is my um, new favorite type of quiver and it just goes right over the top. And then I use my little paracord and just throw it through my belt loop. In theory, it goes very smoothly. And now, the bottom is held pretty securely, so as I bend over to get anything done, it's not sliding to the front of me. You can see that your fletchings are behind you and out of the way, so if you're going through the woods, branches aren't as likely to grab them as if you had a back quiver on. You're not flagging your um, colors. So like in this case, I've got the nice orange in there, I've got the red in there. Um, you know, animals to my um, shooting vision aren't going to be able to see those as easily as if they're way up top. I can also look down here, and I've modified my judo tips to have a little cresting on the bottom. So if Joe can get on that real nice, it's going to wear off eventually, but it allows me, if I want to grab a field tip, I grab one that doesn't have anything in it. If I want to grab a judo, I can just grab down and find that cresting and I've got what I want. Um, the one negative to this type of quiver is very difficult to um, get your arrows back in. You have to basically ride it up and drop it down. You do get the motion down, but my fletching, since I've started shooting this quiver, um, I would say it probably halves the, the life of the actual fletchings. And you can't run a lot of arrows in there if you're going to retrieve it. Um, for something like running through the woods roving or on a 3D shoot where maybe you're using one or two primary arrows and you just want to have some backups, absolutely ideal. But out on the field, if you're shooting six to eight arrows, you're kind of rotating through a lot. Maybe you're shooting 30 yards and you want to put a lot of arrows down so you don't have to go back and forth a lot. If you don't have someone to load it from the top, constantly loading it from the bottom is going to wear these feathers out. Um, also, I haven't put a lot of kind of time into it, but I would think that a shield cut one is a little bit um, tougher on them versus just your usual parabolic. And so once again, once you've got it, you kind of grab it, you ride it up, and you can see I've got it poking out there. It went through the upper, and then now it's sitting in that retaining ring. So this is the quiver, I'll kind of show you it from the back. go to shoot it's out of your way completely 
it's there's absolutely nothing in your way when you go to shoot and yet you can carry arrows that normally with a standard hip quiver you wouldn't be able to do so like i said conceptually i love it i love the look of it um it definitely only has certain function though and so if you were only going to get one quiver this might not be the best for you but i think you need all kinds of quivers and so um, this is my new favorite for certain features thanks for joining us guys